Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to find partial derivatives in Calc 3, multivariable calculus. So let's just start explaining it with an example problem. Let's say I have the function z equals x squared minus 6y plus xy. And I want you to find both partial z, partial x, and the notation I'm using is this little curly D here. It's, it's not a normal D anymore. It's now curly like that. That's saying the partial derivative, which I'll explain in a second. And I also want you to find partial Z, partial Y. So let's start with the X one first. When you take partial derivatives, it's not exactly like implicit differentiation from Calc 1, but you're basically taking the derivative of X and you're treating Y like a constant. As a matter of fact, if you did not like implicit differentiation, I think you'll actually like partial derivatives because it takes out a lot of the messy work. So in other words, derivative of x squared is just 2x, done. Derivative of minus 6y, because it does not have an x, is just 0. And then the derivative of xy, this might be confusing, but the answer is just y. And why is it just y? Well, because if this was, for instance, if that was x times 3, you would say the derivative of x times 3 would just be 3. Well, when we do partial derivatives, y is just a coefficient, as if it were just that 3. So the derivative of anything times x is just the thing, in this case, y. We'll be doing more and more examples today, but this is not a product rule. As a matter of fact, it's very unlikely we'll have product rules in partial derivatives, which is nice. So this just reduces to 2x plus y, and there's my partial derivative for x. And now if I want the partial derivative for y, it would be derivative of x squared is 0, minus derivative of 6y is 6. And then similar idea here, now the x is the coefficient, y is the variable, and just like if this was 3y, derivative of 3y would just be 3, derivative of xy is just going to be x. Maybe you're starting to get it. If not, you will by the end of this video. So final answer, negative 6 plus x. And now let's do another one. For this one, we have f of xy equals x e to the y minus root x plus 1. First thing I want to address, obviously it's different. Before it was z equals, now it's f of xy equals. It's identical. It's like the same idea. It's not going to change how we solve this problem. But one thing I will say, now there's two notations I can give here. One notation is partial f, partial x, and of course, partial f, partial y. That's one way we can write this, but my personal favorite is I can write f sub x and f sub y. And this means partial derivative x, partial derivative y. And I guess technically we could have done it for the last one, we could have said z sub x and z sub y, but honestly, I just never see anyone write that. I almost always see people write partial z, partial x, and partial z, partial y. So now back to this problem. Let's first find partial derivative of x together. Derivative of x times e to the y. Remember, x is the variable. e to the y is just a coefficient. It's just going to be e to the y as my derivative because it's just like x to the first, so you just write the coefficient. Then for the square root of x, remember that's really x to the 1 half, just like from Calc 1. So that's just going to be minus 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. There's a couple different ways you can write that. However you write it, I'm fine with it. Like for instance, if you want to write instead negative 1 over 2 x to the 1 half, or negative 1 over 2 root x, that's the exact same thing, so I don't care how you write it. And then finally, derivative of plus 1 is going to be 0. And that's going to be true both for the x and the y partial derivative. So that's it for the x partial derivative. And now let's see if you can find f sub y on your own this time. Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can do it. Okay, so first, derivative of e to the y with x as just a normal coefficient out in front. Derivative of that is just going to be x, because it's a coefficient, times e to the y, because derivative of e to the y is itself. And then derivative of x to the 1 half, well, hey, that doesn't even have a y in it, so that's 0. And then derivative of plus 1, that's 0 as well. 
So it looks like the partial derivative of y is just this, x times e to the y. And there we go, that's it. And now for this third and final problem we have today, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I want you to find six different things. I want you to find fx, I want you to find fy, and then I want you to find fxx, fyy, fxy, and fyx. And what the heck are these guys on the right? So fxx and fyy are like the second derivative. It'd be the same thing as f double prime of x back in calc one. And then a similar idea with fxy and fyx, they're called mixed partial derivatives. You first take the derivative with respect to x and then you take it with respect to y. It ends up being pretty fun. So first, why don't you pause the video and find fx and fy on your own. You should be able to do it for these two. If you can't, that's fine. I'm gonna show you the solution right now. So first for x, 3y squared, the coefficient, derivative of x to the fourth being 4x cubed. I'll simplify that in the next step. And then plus natural log of x times y. So traditionally, the derivative of natural log of anything is the derivative in the numerator and the original in the denominator. So in this case, the derivative of x times y is just gonna be a coefficient rule, y, and the original is xy. And we even notice that the y's cancel here, leaving me with a final answer of three times four, 12 y squared x cubed, order of x and y technically does not matter, plus one over x, there's my partial x derivative. And then for partial y, derivative of three x to the fourth y squared, you bring the two out from the y squared, giving you six x to the fourth times y to the first, which is really just y. And then same idea for natural log of x times y, derivative in the numerator, derivative of x times y, the x is just the coefficient, and since it's the coefficient rule, derivative will be x, and then divided by the original xy. Once again, the x's cancel, and we will get six x to the fourth times y, plus one over y. There is our partial y derivative. Now let's talk about finding f, x, x together. So first, as a reminder, here was partial derivative of x. If you wanna take the partial derivative of x again, it's gonna be power rule, three times 12 is 36, y squared's a coefficient, and now it's x squared there. And then for one over x, remember that's really x to the minus one power, so minus x to the negative second power, and that's fine just writing it like that. So that's how you do second derivative of x. If you want, you could even find a third derivative of x, and if you were to do that, I'll just tell you, you'd get 72y squared x plus 2x to the minus third power. So that's how we do these x derivatives. And now let's find fyy, remembering that fy was this. So then the second derivative with respect to y is gonna be coefficient rule for the first part, six x to the fourth, and then that's again y to the minus one, so minus y to the negative second, and there's our second derivative with y. And now the fun ones, fxy and fyx, the first thing I wanna tell you is that these two things will always be equal to each other. This is known as Clairaut's theorem, which basically says the order of your partial derivatives doesn't matter. And that's true no matter how many x's and y's you have, you can mix up the order however you want, as long as you have the same number of x's, y's, z's, whatever, they're gonna be equal to each other. So then let's prove that. So as a reminder, here's fx and fy. If I want to find fxy, I'm really dealing with fx, the left one, and then taking the derivative as if it were y, which means now x cubed is the coefficient and following the power rule on y squared, 2y, and the derivative of one over x is just zero because it doesn't even have a y in it. So then it looks like I get 24x cubed y for fxy. 
Then if I do f y x, which normally I don't need to do this because I know the answer is just going to be this, but just to prove it anyway, you're looking at f y, this guy, and you're taking the derivative with respect to x, specifically the x to the fourth. So that means it's going to be 6 times 4, power rule, 24 x cubed times y, and again derivative of 1 over y is 0 because it doesn't have x in it. Therefore, proving that Clairaut's theorem was correct, I guess he's a pretty smart guy, and yes, the two partial derivatives are equal to each other. And so that's going to do it for this video. If you have any more questions on partial derivatives, please leave them in the comments. Thank you all for watching, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.